Hello everyone, my name is Ms. Fatma Fakhri and this video is an introduction to AP Human Geography. In this video, I'll introduce myself briefly. I'll talk about the learning environment. Um, I'll also give you an overview of uh, the main concepts in our course. I'll talk about the resources and finally, I'll talk about my classroom expectations. So let's begin. First of all, uh, my name is uh, Fatma Fakhri. Uh, I have BA in English language and masters in English linguistics. Um, I've been teaching for 20 years between university and high school. Uh, currently I'm teaching three classes of English 12 and I'm also teaching AP Human Geography. So that means that some of you, I'll have some of you in both classes. Uh, um, our classroom environment is a conducive learning environment. This means that uh, the setting allows for free exchange of ideas, thoughts, and skills among uh, the teacher and the learners. And this is all, of course, uh, to achieve the expected educational goals. Uh, the atmosphere in my class is very warm and friendly and very, very comfortable. The class is a safe zone. Uh, you will never be embarrassed. You will never be judged. And also, our relationship is strictly built on mutual respect. When I talk, you will listen. When you talk, I will listen. Uh, when others talk, you will listen to them. And of course, hard work is always rewarded. Now, a bit about the course. The course introduces you to the systematic study of patterns and processes that have been shaped that have shaped human understanding, use, and alteration of the Earth's surface. So you will employ spatial concepts and landscape analysis to examine socio-economic organization and its environmental consequences. You'll also learn about the methods and tools geographers use in their research and applications. Uh, of course, the curriculum reflects the goals of the National Geography Standards of 2012. Uh, course college equivalent, the AP Human Geography course is equivalent to an introductory college level course in human geography. As for the prerequisites, uh, there are no prerequisites for human geography but you should be very good in English. Uh, this means that you should be able to read and understand uh, college level text perfectly well, and you should be able to write grammatically correct and complete sentences. I will give you so we'll start with unit one and unit one is titled thinking geographically and uh, it carries eight to ten percent of your mark in the external and this unit covers the tools and methods geographers use to study places and this would include the use of maps, data, and analysis of complex issues and relationships uh, to reveal spatial patterns. Now, you can see that we have three big ideas, and these big ideas will spiral throughout the course. Uh, they are actually the foundation for the course and they help you uh, create a connection uh, 
among the concepts that you will be learning. So in the first big idea, which is patterns and spatial organization, uh, our essential question would be how does where and how people live impact global cultural, political, and economic patterns? In the second big idea, which is impacts and interactions, our essential question would be how does the interplay of environmental, economic, cultural, and political factors influence changes in population? Our third big idea is spatial patterns and societal changes. And our essential question would be how do changes in population affect a place's economy and culture? Unit 2 talks about population and migration, patterns and processes, and this carries 12 to 17 percent of your mark on the external. And this unit is all about the patterns associated with human populations. You will learn about global culture, political and economic patterns based on an understanding of where and how people. You'll also examine what causes changes in population and the short and long-term effects of these changes on a place's economy, politics, and culture. We have the same basic uh, big ideas, but different essential questions. So under patterns and spatial organization, our essential question would be how does where and how people live impact global, cultural, political, and economic patterns? And the second big idea, which is impacts and interactions, our essential question would be how does the interplay of environmental, economic, cultural, and political factors influence changes in population? And our third big idea is spatial patterns and societal change, is how do changes in population affect the places, economy, culture, and politics? To unit three, and unit three is titled Cultural Patterns and Processes, and it carries 12 to 17 percent of your mark on the external. And this, in this unit, you'll learn how and why religion, language, and other cultural practices spread across places and time. You will examine factors that influence cultures, like physical geography, available resources, and the interaction of people. And again, with the big ideas, we said it's the same big ideas, but the content is different in each one. So under patterns and spatial organization, our essential question would be how does where people live and what resources they have access to impact their cultural practices? Under impacts and interactions, our essential question would be how does the interaction of people contribute to the spread of cultural practices? And under spatial patterns and societal change will be how and why do cultural ideas, practices, and innovations change or disappear over time. In unit four, titled Political Patterns and Processes, and this carries 12 to 17 percent of your mark in the externals, uh, the unit mainly focuses on the political organization of the world. It uh, examines how historical processes, events, and ideas impact politics. You'll also study how political boundaries and divisions of governance reflect negotiated or imposed balances of power. For the big ideas, uh, for patterns and spatial organization, our essential question would be how do historical and current events influence political structures around the world? For the second big idea, impacts and interactions, our essential question would be how are balances of power reflected in political boundaries and government power structures? And in our third big idea, spatial patterns and societal change, how can political, economic, cultural, or technological changes 
challenge state sovereignty. At unit five, and unit five talks about agriculture and rural land use patterns and processes. Again, it carries 12 to 17 percent of your mark. And here you learn where people first developed agriculture and how these agricultural practices spread around the world. You will learn about how and why agriculture has changed over time, including cultural diffusion and advances in technology. We'll also examine why agriculture productions and consumption patterns are different in different places. Of course, the same big ideas, but different essential questions. So on the patterns and spatial organization, you'll have how do a people's culture and resources available to them influence how they grow food and impacts and interactions. You'll have how does what people produce and consume vary in different locations and under the third big idea, spatial patterns and so, uh, societal change, what kind of cultural changes and technological advances have impacted the way people grow and consume food. In Unit 6, uh, which is titled Cities and Urban Land Use, Patterns and Processes, it also carries 10 to 12 percent of your mark on the external. It focuses on urbanization, uh, including its origin and influences. You learn about different cities around the world and the role of these cities in globalization. You'll also explore the unique political, cultural, economic, and environmental challenges of the urban areas. Again, the big ideas. So under patterns and spatial organization, our essential question would be, how do physical geography and resources impact the presence and growth of cities? and the impacts and interactions, how are the attitudes, values, and balance of power of a population reflected in the built landscape and spatial patterns and societal change, how are urban areas affected by unique economic, political, cultural, and environmental challenges. And finally, in Unit 7, we'll talk about industrial and economic development patterns and processes this also carries 12 to 17 percent of your mark. You'll learn about industrialization and its role in economic development. You'll also learn about why social and economic development happens at different rates and in different times and in different places. You'll examine economic problems resulting from industrialization and how these problems can be remedied. So again, the same big ideas, but the content is different. So the first big idea, our essential question is, why does economic and social development happen at different times and rates in different places? Our second essential question would be, how might environmental problems stemming from industrialization be remedied through sustainable development strategies? Our third big, big idea will be why has industrialization helped to improve standards of living while also contributing to geographically uneven development. Now to the resources. Uh, the main book will be the AMSCO Human Geography, Advanced Placement. And uh, this will be your main book. This will be your, where you study from. Alongside the main book, you'll have the Barron's AP Human Geography Prep Book. And most importantly, you have the AP Classroom. And this is the most useful platform. This is where you have videos on every single topic uh, in your course. And you'll also have uh, MCQ and FRQ practices. And these are very useful in preparing you for the final exam. My classroom expectations are very simple. I want you to come to class on time. Please come fully prepared with your laptops fully charged. We need laptops in class every single day. We use them because we practice on the AP Classroom platform. 
you have to be respectful. We talked about respect. And remember, perseverance is the key to success. Please participate and don't be shy. And finally, I'm really looking forward to seeing you all. Thank you very much for listening.